This is the sensor stick. It's powered with an Arduino Mega, and it's got a whole bunch of sensors connected. Proximity infrared, magnetic compass, 4-axis tilt, ultraviolet, lux, accelerometer, gyroscope, 9 degrees of freedom, barometric altimeter and temperature, a light to frequency converter, and a ultrasonic distance sensor. That's the hardware that's currently connected. There's also uh, code and testing done with servos, but they're not rigged up at the moment. And on the software side, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just serial connected to the terminal. So basically the I command will give you the information. And here what we're looking at, you'll see the device ID number on the left, and then a description of what the sensor is. And then on the right, it'll say D or E for disabled or enabled. So you can see the barometric altimeter is device number three, it's disabled. Underneath the dotted line there is the command set, which I kind of already explained most of them. Uh, e and D is to enable, disable. R is to read whichever sensors are currently enabled. It'll spit out one line. Each of the sensor's values will be separated by a comma. If a sensor has multiple channels, like the IMU, for example, each of those values within that one sensor will be separated by a colon. And then each of the servos that are connected to the system will have to have its own identifying command. So you'll see here PTY, pan, tilt, yaw. You know, if you had like a gripper or claw, G or C or whatever you need, each of those sensors or servos will have to have a preceding identifying letter by itself, and then you send it the angle you want the horn to move at. And then the Q command disables the servo power. So if the servos aren't in use and the horns don't need to be holding at the position, you can save a lot of current by just turning that power off. So a quick demo, the um, I'll enable four, which is the, the ping sensor. I'll do one, just a read, one line. Okay, so it's reading like seven inches from the camera, and you know you can provide stimulus and, and, and change it up in order to see what's going on. But the obvious use will be S to start streaming, and I can move it around a little bit here. So now you can see the sensor data streaming. Uh, I still use the I command a lot because I forget what's on here. The light commands are, are, or the light sensors are kind of interesting. I'll enable the Lux sensor, the UV sensor, and the light to frequency converter, and I'll stream them. Now, if you notice, it's streaming a lot slower. The way it works is the stream comes in the speed of the slowest sensor in use. So if the speed is an issue or something that you need to be aware of for your application. And I'm just going to provide, you know, cover up some sensors or provide light on some. I don't know if I can get some more UV from a flashlight. UV is kind of hard on the indoor environment, but take it outside and you'll see a lot. And as you can see, when I do the information after that, the Lux sensor, the UV, and the TSL-235R, which is the light to frequency converter, they all show enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and disable those. We'll do another information just so to verify that it's closed. Now I'm going to enable the IMU because I'd like you to see the actual values here. And that's what it's going to come in on. So from the left to right, you're looking at accelerometer X, accelerometer Y, accelerometer Z, gyro X, gyro Y, gyro Z, all denoted separated by a colon. So if I stream that, it's, this is a sensor that's very easy because all you got to do is just barely move the thing and you'll see how the values change. And the whole point of the sensor stick is not to use the terminal commands with a human typing in the keyboard like this because it's very hard to kind of interpret the data that's coming in. It's that this should be connected to a system that's running some type of software that would benefit from being able to control which sensors are enabled or disabled at a certain time. 
and then how to read it. Do you want a one-time, one-line reading? Or do you want to stream it and then have that software at react or process something as fast as the information you can come through the serial port or, or like I said, the slowest sensor that's connected to the system? You know, with a mega, there's so many pins. You can connect so many different things to it. You can control a bunch of servos if you want to use it as an output. A uh, whole bunch of sensors. It's really almost the sky's the limit as long as you don't run out of like, device IDs, which they're just make them up as you go, integers in the code. It doesn't use very much of the Arduino um, or the Mega's EEPROM. I think last time I uploaded it, it was 7% of the program space. So there's there's a lot you can you can do with it to extend the operation. Thanks for watching.